You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. VHS copies of the 
the lunar module returning back to the command module in space coming from the lunar surface. There's no Photoshop, there's no CGI back then. This stuff doesn't exist. So now let me pull this video down into my software and let me turn the contrast down because the surface of the moon is so bright. That's why you can't see stars. Because all you can't see stars. Well, you can't see stars. You don't understand photography and videography. You don't understand how light works and reflectiveness works. If you, you're not gonna see stars when you have a sun gleaming off the surface of something that has that much helium-3. But anyway, um, so I turn the contrast down and right away, what do you see? Domes. So many domes, I couldn't even count them all. One of them was the most famous dome structure ever discovered, discovered by me, at Main TV. It went on, it's on, um, it's actually on Beyond Belief with George Nori, on Gaia as well, it's actually on that show. It made the news a few times. It's a dome structure that has buildings that are about one mile high. We don't have that kind of construction uh, technique down here on Earth right now. Uh, and um, the amazing thing about it was another one of my team members, Chris Maroney, who, who runs a, a YouTube channel called Mars Anomalies, he went to the USGS.gov radar scan of the moon, and he looked at the radar imagery, and that penetrates the, the surface by about 30 meters. And right away, it's amazing footage. You see structures, what look like gigantic steel beams underneath the moon's surface on official USGS.gov data feed. What in the world is going on? So when you're going back, oh wait, the, room, the moon rang like a bell. This moon probably is hollow. Whether they hollowed it out or they built it that way, nobody knows. But there is an account of the Anunnaki going to the moon and they, that, that helmet, you know, that Tommy, when you see them wearing that fish, or they look like they have, no fish, I'm sorry, bird head, because sometimes they have a human head, sometimes they have a bird head. The bird head is a, is a helmet. So they say, you know, get the, uh, the eagle's mask, and they would put on the eagle's mask, because they would say that the atmosphere on Mars, or they would be talking about the moon, is very bad, so they would put it on the eagle's mask. So when you see them depicted with having that bird head, that's because they're putting on a helmet, that's their space helmet. And it could be that they're taking these people who are witness every time they were getting in these ships with these bags. It could be that it wasn't for Earth. It could be that those bags were just getting in ships and taking off. But either way, there was even an account in the tablets where one uh, sect or one, one, one uh, relative was fighting against the other. And this is one group of relatives that had done something so horrible that they were banished to go live on the moon. And the reason why I'm bringing this up to get back to your original question was the Apollo 11 black box tape one of the um, astronauts says uh, that he's looking at a, um, a convex uh, dome, I'm mean, a convex uh, crater, and a conical crater, I'm sorry, a conical crater is what he said, conical. So a conical crater means you're looking at a dome type of a structure. And then Neil goes, wow, look down there, I bet the people down there never get out. Well, there must be nothing more desolate than to be inside some of these small craters, conical ones. People that live in here probably never get out. Yeah, that's right. Why would he say something like that? I mean, everything is recorded on there. Even if you sneeze, that's recorded. So he actually said the, the people on it. Now, Apollo 10 flew around the backside of the moon, and a lot of people don't know that this is really a famous thing that happened back then. Something connected to all their comms. And in the comms, they heard singing and music coming from the back side of the moon. Now, when you go to the back side of the moon, you're completely disconnected from Earth. You have no communication. Your Houston's cut off. It takes about an hour, I think, to get back into radio range. But while they got to the back side, something connected to their comms on their comm frequency and was playing music. And, they, and the tapes, which are available to everybody, oh my God, can you hear that? That's music. What is music doing playing in our comms? Oh my, they just kept saying, oh, they were so blown away there was music coming in, some type of a weird music, but they identified it as music. You want some more brownies? Now. That hit music even sounds outer spacey, doesn't it? Did you hear that? That whistling sound? Yeah. Woo! Hey, it's your yeah, it sounds like, uh, you know, outer space-type music. It wasn't like our music, but it wasn't like Earth music. 
No, it wasn't Donnie Arcade. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't that. But it was, um, they kind of reckoned it to, um, uh, what do you say? It was like almost like classical. And uh, they mentioned it over a dozen times. So and it was just, it was every single astronaut that was in that capsule. So it really did happen. And whatever it was, knew how to tap into their calm frequency, which is pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, so that was pretty crazy stuff. Matter of fact, when the Apollo 11 was going to the moon, which is a three day, it's a three day flight to get there, Buzz Aldrin, and this, this is one of the documentaries I did called Docuphobia, he's uh, interviewed and he's saying that there was something flying alongside of them on the way to the moon. And they, re they start having a communication about it, but then they stop themselves because they don't want the, the, the mission to get canceled because they've been waiting your whole life for this one moment. So they, they, they stop talking about it in that way, and then they contact Houston and say, Houston, where is the, um, you know, the rocket booster? Because you know, they're trying to see if it's the rocket booster or if they can give Houston a hint that there's something outside our window. And they would say, wow, but we see something outside of our window. And then Houston radios back and says, that's been a jettison and it's already you know, in the atmosphere, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, okay, so, Buzz said we decided not to talk about it anymore because we didn't want them to cancel the mission and send us back home. Do you have any idea where the uh, N4P is with respect to us? Am I? Now, obviously, the three of us were not going to uh, blurt out, hey, Houston, we got something moving alongside of us and uh, we don't know what it is. You know, can you tell us what it is? We weren't about to do that. When they got to the moon, the next thing they did, there's another tape out, okay, anybody can download this tape, it's official footage. Buzz goes, oh my God, they just landed across the crater and they're watching us. <laughs> then, Norman Bergman, who's in an interview uh, with uh, Project Camelot, that's the guy at the head of Ames Research, who, had, who was sitting there in the top secret room watching the actual landing, like, you know, live. He's looking at some of the images and stuff like that, and he's noticing that there's nine foot tall black people getting out of a ship across the crater just like buzz said this backs up buzz's thing now the lady goes black people goes yeah black people now he didn't say that it was black like we're africans he said they were black black like really black that was his he was adamant about it um, it could be that they've been wearing a full suit of blackness or it could have been that they were i mean i don't know if you're going to be on the moon with your skin out i sit i seriously <laughs> doubt that but he said, black people, seven to nine foot tall, black people got out of this ship and watched us walk on the moon. Mm. And this guy is... Hi, I'm Billy Carson, researcher, speaker, and best-selling author of The Compendium of the Emerald Tablets and Woke Doesn't Mean Broke. I'm inviting you to join me on ForbiddenKnowledge.tv to enjoy hours of great programming, learn the secrets of ancient Egypt, unexplained structures on the moon and Mars, financial literacy, holistic and healthy lifestyles. Go now to ForbiddenKnowledge.tv and get three days free. While there, you can enter to win a Rolls Royce. That's ForbiddenKnowledge.tv. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Hi, my name is Billy Carson, and I'm the president of Forbidden Knowledge. We have an amazing investment opportunity here for anyone who wants to buy shares in Forbidden Knowledge. The money that's generated from this crowdfunding platform is going to be used to bring on a new content acquisitions partner. We're going to hire a new in-house graphics designer, a social media manager, a put together a customer service team and a customer service management program that will organize and satisfy all the different legs of Forbidden Knowledge Inc. As well as, and of course, make more improved high quality streaming content for the Forbidden Knowledge TV platform, which right now is featured on Apple TV, Roku, Amazon Fire TV, iOS and Android apps, and also of course, the web. The streaming platform is a year old right now and doing very, very well. And we're looking for your support where you can not only be a conscious customer, but also be a part owner in an amazing opportunity 
that includes streaming TV, book publishing, and e-commerce. Grow with us and earn with us. Forbidden Knowledge Inc. You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.